Welcome to the Red Dice Diary and this is a player tips video called Wear Lots of Hats. Now you may have heard the phrase wearing lots of hats before and it normally means you're doing a lot of jobs or you have a lot of responsibilities. Well in RPG we do wear lots of hats but in this case it's the player characters that we bring to life or if you're a GM the NPCs that populate your world. Now there's a lot of tips out there, whether on videos or in books. I've put some out myself, and I'll probably do some more in the future, for GMs to make their NPCs memorable. This video, however, is for the players. Now as a player, you only have a single character in a game, so you really want to get a lot of bang for your book when it comes to bringing that character to life. And getting your fellow players to see you as that character is one of the most vital parts of doing this. One way to do this is with costuming. Now calm down, I'm not suggesting that you hire out a full orc costume and sit there banging a club on the table during the session. Although if you want to, and the rest of your group is cool with that, then go for it, for your boots. No, what I'm talking about are some minimal bits of costuming that needn't cost you loads of money, but that can go a long way to making your character really pop and jump out of the table. When we create a character sheet, we normally put pictures of our characters on them and we adopt the mannerism of those characters during play. This is partly to maximise the illusion that you're not Bob Smith anymore, but you're Thrudgar the Barbarian or Talis Navanda the Intergalactic Space Pirate or whatever your character happens to be. This is especially important when you're playing an online game, since you don't have the same sort of personal contact you do in a face-to-face -face game. In fact, they might only see this sort of small section of you. Adding a couple of simple costume bits, in addition to whatever character pictures, overlays, etc. you would normally have, can really help yourself and other people get into character. After all, if you feel more like the character, you'll tend to roleplay them better and act like them more. The reason this video is called Wear Lots of Hats is because hats are the one of the easiest ways to do this. So for instance, if I were playing a rich gentleman in a Victorian setting, I might wear a top hat like this. If I were playing something more working class, then I might wear a hat that was more like this one. And it doesn't just apply to hats. Now, I'd be willing to bet that a good proportion of the audience watching this video owns one of these. A fairly standard hoodie. It's easy enough to pull up the hood and cover your eyes with it if you're playing a more sinister character or someone who wears robes. And that's just using an item of clothing that most of us will already have. Cheap Halloween masks are also good for things like this. As long as they're comfortable enough for you to wear and they don't obscure your voice too much. Another thing that is useful is neck scarves or shemags as they're also called. I've got one here. It's a simple piece of cloth, normally in a square. They're fairly easy to get hold of, fairly cheap. You can get them online and you just simply do that with it. And they're useful for everything from bandits in westerns to bank robbers in modern day settings. And you could also combine different bits and pieces. So for instance, if I'm playing a, a cowboy, perhaps I'll combine this shemag with a hat like this. And there we are. Now, obviously I'm not gonna completely dress up in the costume of my character, but just a few little bits and pieces like this can help you get into the character and help others see you as that character. Now, if you do airsoft or live action role play, then a lot of your existing props can be pressed into use for this. I've got a, an airsoft mask there, which could easily be used. If you want, you can even go a little wackier. For instance, I bought this red woolen Cthulhu hat, or the Zoidberg as I like to call it, online for a few pounds, that's a less than five dollars in US money. And I bought that because I was playing a Quarren in a Star Wars game who have these squid-like tentacles. And I just spotted it on the net, grabbed it, and the other players are already reacting very positively to it. Whatever you choose to do, 
adding a few little bits of costuming can help you get into the zone and make playing your character easier. It also helps to sell your character to the other players and the GM, shows that you are committed to the game and that you really want to make the best of the time on camera that your character has and it will help everyone else associate first of all with the character rather than the player behind them. So there we go, there's just a few tips on how costuming can help bring your character to life and give a little bit of an extra element to it. I hope if you've enjoyed this video you can consider clicking on the red dice up there to subscribe to my channel. If you have any comments, as always, put them in the comments section down below. I do enjoy reading what you write. And until I see you next time, take care and happy gaming wherever you are in the world.